Everyone's talking about digital twins, but I find so many different definitions and different understandings and I thought I'd use myself as an example and explain how digital twin applications for real-time operations can really help organizations improve asset performance and help find those unexpected events that typically increase risk and cost us money. So if you look at a digital twin for myself, so this is me, well this is a photo of me, but this is me and um, a couple of years ago at a Microsoft event, a Microsoft Expire, uh, Inspire event, um, they had a great setup where uh, you could stand on a rotating disc and there were a couple of kinetic cameras and as the disc spun it would take a 3D image of you uh, which they handed out to us. So now I have a 3D model of myself which I could potentially use for a number of different use cases. I could uh, I could print a 3D model of myself. I could potentially fit some clothes on this 3D model and see what brands would fit me or what different colors would look like. Um, but you know, is this really a digital twin of myself? And looking at how digital twins uh, has evolved over the last couple of years, I came came to the conclusion that my smartphone is probably a better representation of a digital twin of myself than that 3D model. Now if you look at the history of digital twins, it typically started off as 3D or CAD based models um, where we try to create a, a, a visual representation or digital representation of a physical object. As, as digital twins are uh, evolving, we're starting to see um, that it's more than just a 3D model but it actually encapsulates a lot of the things that I do. It knows a lot about me in a number of different areas. Now, the smartphone is a great example of this where um, there are a number of different applications on my phone that knows quite a lot about me. So if you look at the photos, um, uh, my phone knows where I've been, uh, w what people I, I've, um, I've been in contact with, who my family is, if it looks at Google Map data, it will know where I've traveled, where I've been. Uh, likewise with Instagram or Skype, it'll know my conversations. Well, hopefully it doesn't know all the, the detail of, of, of the conversation, but um, it's a bit creepy that when I when, when I get in my car, it even knows where I'm going. So Google is telling me, um, you know, you're heading there and it'll take you this long to 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 drive there, um, which again is a little bit creepy, uh, in, but in terms of predictive capability of digital twins, it kind of shows the future of where some of these things are going. And to be quite honest, my phone knows a lot more about me than anyone else, um, including my wife and close family. Um, my, 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 my phone knows absolutely everything. And if, if we look at a couple of examples, um, around my my health for example there are different number of health apps and depending on what I'm uh, what I want to use it for it's got different sets of data um, that it that it collects either real time or um, when I when I'm using that specific app uh, likewise with finances it knows everything about my investments uh, my banks about my bank account what I'm spending on my credit card um, the, the 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 stocks that I'm investing in and uh, in terms of my travel where I've been um, so in, if you're looking at the f at the phone as a repository or as a, f as a single front end it's not a single database with all the information in each application has its own data source and it can it can interchange so if you're looking at the health apps it can interchange some of the data um, so um, but 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 each app has got its uh, its own data source or, or its own way of collecting its own analytics um, and its own use case uh, that it applies to but it's all accessible from one single user interface um, and it it's got the best representation of of knowing who I'm talking to socially um, where I've been what my um, financial uh, state is and also what my health is. So if I look at health in a little bit more detail, um, if you go into, for example, the, the Apple Health app, it will show you uh, in terms of your current 
performance in terms of where you're, uh, in, in terms of uh, activity and things that you may have done um, it will show you some of your records now some of these are historical records um, anything from uh, uh, and again this is whether it can come from a sensor it could come from doctor's records there could be different places where all this data comes from but this is the single place where I can see and this is the best digital representation of myself um, it knows more about my health than anyone else um, in one single area so whether it is it is heart health health records reproductive health um, th there's a broad range of 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 different data sources um, and depending again on the use case that I'm that I want to use this health data for so in my instance I'm a I'm an aspiring triathlete so for example if I use Strava um, and one of the things that I do um, I'd like to train based on on keeping my heart rate at a certain level so that's real-time monitoring and information that I that I need to know and what this digital twin does it um, shows me um, where I've been it, it gives me some of the historical data for a specific activity so I can look into that but I can also see it at real time and you know I can even have it on a on, on, on a different user interface like uh, Apple watch where I can actually see it real time as I'm doing the exercise uh, and the other use case for the same information is that my family so when I'm uh, at a race my family can monitor me in real time um, without looking at the physical me they just look at uh, my twin or proxy on the internet so they don't have to look at me they just look at um, this this avatar that I have on, on on the internet and it uses the same sensors that that feed the different UIs um, through the same APIs so each app doesn't have to have its own sensor data my phone for example the GPS is used by multiple different applications uh, for their own use but it's the same GPS location the same with any one of the other sensors uh, in the phone the other um, interesting thing um, with this is I can swap out equipment uh, the underlying sensor equipment so I can change my Fitbit to a Garmin or have a new model of a Garmin or whatever um, new and latest fad there is with um, with the sensor based technology uh, th that I use to collect this data um, and it doesn't even blip on the app the app doesn't even know because it's just collecting the data through a standard integration user interface um, and if I swap out the underlying data source the application and the what I use this for in this example my heart rate training um, it does not even know um, that I've swapped out the underlying equipment so looking at this um, this is the best representation of me if you wanted to know if, if, if from a digital twin perspective uh, again it knows everything from uh, um, about me in terms of my physical health, um, financial health, um, my social life, uh, who I know, what conversations I'm, I'm, I'm in, who I'm connected to. So this is the best digital representation of myself. And if we look at our factory or plant or mine, so, so how's this different than just having um, my my iPhone or my Android or whatever device you're using as the uh, as the the place that serves all the applications well it isn't really different so if you look at it how we see it from an X and Pro perspective we have all these different apps so whether this is um, uh, my Google Maps or um, Skype or Outlook or whatever it is that I'm that I'm using or my health apps so let's say for example the equipment maintenance that you see there is similar to to what you saw on the health app if I go one level deeper into equipment uh, maintenance I can see the different applications that I can that, that I can uh, set up as digital twin representation so for example I can create a centrifugal pump uh, um, uh, condition monitoring or predictive maintenance um, model the first they two different applications and they use the same underlying data source and the way that we set this up 
inside XM Pro is here's my data flow or how I wire up my digital twin um, from different data sources. So in this instance it's using uh, OS iSoft and OPC uh, UA and it's going through some logic, some analytics, same as what my phone is doing when it's predicting uh, 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 where I'm heading if you look at what Google Maps are doing or um, what my time is going to be if I run or um, and in this instance we're predicting that certain equipment is going to fail and then we are creating work orders and sending our recommendation and putting it on a dashboard for you to see. Um, the interesting thing is I can swap out OPC or, or um, the OSI data source with a different data source and it wouldn't change what I'm seeing at the end, what my digital twin representation is, the thing that I'm getting at the end. Now what this could look like again, this could be a dashboard similar to what you've seen on the Strava one and the XM Pro dashboards can have some historical data, some real-time status, what is happening right now coming from that data stream. Um, the historical ones could be uh, looking at, at historical records similar to what you've seen on the health app. Uh, some recommendations around what I should be doing um, and then current open tasks. So looking at this hydro cracking unit, w the digital twin for this hydro cracking unit is telling me quite a lot of information um, around that. So I don't have to go out to the to the physical unit, I can just look at this. If I look at um, a maintenance or a, a pump um, where a certain condition occurred down that flow, again a different style of a dashboard so every app can have its own look and feel in terms of what the dashboards look like inside XM Pro but I can see also other information coming from my SAP or Maximo or whatever EAM system what current maintenance we've got planned um, what did we do recently so bringing in some of that transactional information again like the health records and um, we're not replacing it so this is not one mega uber big digital twin it actually connects to the data that sits in the different places it's not replacing it um, it's also not replicating it it is merely showing it you in the context of the application that you're trying to use it in. In this instance I want to either on the right hand side select a certain action whether it's creating work orders, uh, requesting spares, um, escalating it to engineering to have a look at this and review it, all the different use cases and yes I can have uh, the 3D models embedded as part of that as part of this decision support in this digital twin. So as you can see, there's no difference between um, how I use my smartphone as my digital twin representation. There's no difference in terms of how you can set up digital twin applications for real-time operations monitoring and operations management. Now, just to explain a little bit in terms of at what level does a digital twin sit? Well, it can actually sit at any level. It really depends on what your use case is. Um, so it might be that I've got that I specifically want to look at this gearbox on um, the ball mill and that might be a simple twin so I've got a simple dashboard simple monitoring or it might be a composite twin which is assembly of uh, a, a number of different individual twin components and this creates my ball mill unit so this is for one ball mill or my use case might be I need to look at uh, the the total throughput throughput um, in my whole processing plant and for that this ball mill is just one of the components so again this digital twin can fit into a broader or bigger application um, a w which we call kind of a system based uh, composite digital twin and then just uh, in terms of the proxy, as I said, when I was um, running the race, my family didn't have to look at me physically. They could look at my proxy, um, which is really that um, digital twin, and they could see where I am and what my performance is. Life without a digital twin, uh, if for all the different use cases that you have, operations, maintenance, safety, and like a whole number of different ones, um, quite often you end up having different or sensors that uh, duplicate or replicate the same in information and every kind of use case has got its own sensors on. Uh, operations have their own um, sensors and information that they're collecting and it creates these silos of different information. 
The benefit is if you're using this digital twin approach, now just think of myself with my phone in the middle and the different use cases that I have like health, finance and whatever the case might be, um, where the phone, re where the, all these little blocks represent the different applications on my phone. Um, likewise on a plant, if I've got a oil platform and I use the concept of a digital twin which can, can contain physics-based models, analytics models, so the physics-based models classically where a lot of these things started with finite element methods and some of the engineering things like thermodynamics, um, analytical models, some of the n newer things that we're seeing around predictive capability, all the time series data and historical data that, we, that we're collecting around time uh, uh, um, time values and then is uh, transactional data sitting in ERPs around maintenance uh, master data around what is the equipment when did we buy it and the visual models like like the CAD and 3D and and some of the others so um, as you can see there's no difference between myself and my iPhone versus your plant and its digital twin and its different use cases